So week five is unpacking the reasons as to why would we engage in this journey of hearing from God. I really appreciate uh, day two's perspective on why we need to hear from God. And, and we're going to talk about this through today as well as through tomorrow on day three. And, and the purpose of it is so that we can truly embrace God as our Father. Now, I want to begin this lesson by acknowledging that there are a number of people that really struggle with that language of father. Now, it, perhaps they had an abusive father, or perhaps they had a, a neglectful father, or just a completely absent father. Um, and there have been a number of people over the years that have so wrestled with the image of God and Father that they've even tried to change some of the language of the scriptures, where they would say, instead of our Father who art in heaven, they would switch it to our mother who art in heaven, because they had a really good relationship with their mother, but not a good relationship with their father. Now I want to begin today by highlighting two things that are somewhat opposed to each other on that. The first is understanding the heart of that desire to change the language is something that can anchor ourselves with that. I get that. That makes a lot of sense for a person who has experienced woundingness to have a hard time to engage with God as a father um, because that might be really difficult for them and might uh, hamper their relationship with God as a father. But the flip side of that is we really should treat God the way that he calls us to treat him. And when he calls us to call him by father, even if we have our struggles with that, that by no means really gives us license to change what his directives are on that. And, and fundamentally what I believe God calls us to do is that if we have had a, a wounding or a difficulty with the image of God as father, then for us to allow him to redeem that. Just, just think about that. No matter how, no matter how vast the chasm of pain is from a father, that our true father in heaven wants to redeem that. And he wants to show us what true fathership actually looks like. And then even with that, with, with the image of what true fathership actually looks like, for, for many of you who've had a good father, this again will be a challenge for you because it'll be basically saying the view or the image that you have of your own father, yes, he was a good man, he was great, but still he pales in comparison to who God the Father actually is. And so it's an opportunity for us to have our view of what father means completely reoriented so that way we can have this grand sense of absolute trust in him, absolute assurity in him, and full confidence that he will never leave us or forsake us because he is a good and perfect father. So with that being said, that's where I, I want to kick off what we're going to be talking about today. And, and today we're going to talk about two particular reasons as to why God invites us to call him and to see him as our father. First, as a father, you want to really assure your children. You want to assure that your children know that they are loved unconditionally, know that they are safe, know that they'll be provided for no matter what. God ultimately wants us to be assured that we are his children. Especially what I think is central to this is that it, the gospel of Jesus Christ says that through the blood of Jesus, we who were not children, so we who are effectively orphans, are then adopted into the family of God and are made children of God. Now, now that whole journey of adoption is, is moving out of a place of no identity, no purpose, no inheritance to a place of having one. And, and there's a lot of fear of moving away from that into this because we, we have a hard time truly embracing the goodness of what it means to be owned and cared for and loved by a heavenly father. And so at the foundation of what God needs to do in all of that is just repeatedly assure us that he will never leave us, never forsake us, and that he will always be our God and always be our father, no matter what unconditionally loved, unconditionally cherished, full of his grace and his mercy. And secondly, God wants to protect his children. He wants to keep them from danger. Now, as a father of uh, multiple kids myself, I, I know the, the need for that within my own heart. Uh, in particular, when I lived in a subdivision a number of years ago and uh, there was only 20 feet between our front door and the roadway, I, I wanted to protect my kids from some of the crazy people who come whipping through our neighborhood at 60 kilometers an hour. So uh, in my protection, I would set some pretty tight boundaries and parameters around them to keep them safe. And you know how that happened? I did that by talking with them. Amazing, right? By me simply saying to them, here's the boundaries, here's why the boundaries are here, here's how I want you to interact with it. A lot of communication back and forth with my kids. That was a way that I would help keep them safe. Likewise, when they crossed one of those boundaries or when they transgressed, what would I do? 
a lot of communication. Sure, there might be a punishment that would go with that. Maybe it'd be a loss of privileges or, or whatever else that may be. But in that, there was a constant communication so they would understand where I'm coming from and that at the core of it, I have a deep desire to protect them and to keep them safe. And I invite you uh, to take some time and download the notes below. There's some pretty cool stuff that Pastor Ray talks about in there, which it's his story, it's not my story. So I invite you to read that because uh, it's, it's really cool just to see the way that God spoke to him as well as a way of providing safety for him. So as we wrap up, just invite you to stick, take a few moments to write down something that stood out to you in this. And also write down some basic notes about uh, why God still wants to speak to us today and the two things that we can learn from uh, him as being a father. Looking forward to also learning two more things tomorrow as we embrace God as father. Now applying this, can you think of a time when God assured you that you belong to him no matter what? If yes, write down what happened, when it happened, and why it happened. And if no, you can't think of a time, lay that before God and see if he says something to you and maybe uh, for the first time gives you a sense of his assurance. Secondly, can you think of a time when God warned you about something? If yes, write it down. If no, ask God, you know, have, have I had my ears attentive? Have I been listening well to you? Spend some time in prayer asking God, is there anything that you want to warn me about now? And if a fear rises up, bring that fear to God in conversational prayer, where you write down, God, I'm afraid of this, and you have your pen ready on the paper, waiting for him to say something, and you write down what he says to you. Uh, I also invite you just to turn to 1 Peter 5, verse 8, and just read through that verse, and allow that to soak in. For ongoing reading, read Matthew 9, verses 9 through 6, and as usual, write down one or two verses that stand out to you, and take some time to reflect on that with your good Heavenly Father. Thank you very much. Looking forward to spending some time with you tomorrow.